What's up, StarCraft fans? Last time we learned how to play level 1 Stukov. This time we're gonna learn to play level 1 Phoenix. So, with Phoenix, obviously, you're gonna have, at level 1 at least, no champions and no Phoenix. So, you're basically 1v1 Protoss. So, we're gonna have to uh, do a little bit of different style for this one. As for your power spikes, two obviously will unlock your first two champions, Kaldalas and Talus. So I would say that's a pretty big power spike, especially if you're going um, the uh, Network Administrator route. But again, the Network Administrator only really unlocks at level 15 because that's when you get Tactical Data Web. But nonetheless, 2 is a pretty big power spike. 3 is Cybros Arbiter, another big power spike because the Cybros Arbiter suit is currently bugged. And you will be kind of able to just, you will kind of be able to just call it down uh, to replace your suits, your other suits. Which have more damage output, so you want to have the, Arbor the Arbiter suit on to recharge your other two suits. Uh, the uh, Champion Research will uh, give your uh, will give Kaldalas the uh, the area damage and uh, Talus the bouncy thing. So another big power spike if you're going Kaldalas route. Uh, Taldarin Mojo you unlocked at level five, also pretty good Taldarin and Mojo. Level six Phoenix Breed Cash, this is fine, not that huge, but good oh detection for the arbiter suit pretty good disruptor don't really use that although if you'd like disruptors i guess uh, this is good for you warburn clawlarian i like i personally like warburner uh when he has the upgrade precious upgrade cash this is just the uh, disruptor and conservator although uh not really that impactful for me since i don't use disruptors the protective field, I'd rather have the, cons the conservator siege up to uh, provide that field permanently. Operational efficiency, this, this was pretty big because you can actually go straight to your tech structure. If you want to go call uh, if you want to go uh color in first, you can go Stargate right away. If you want to fast expand using cannons, you can go just straight to cannons without the forge. So 10 is pretty is a pretty big power spike. Avenging protocol, this will make your champions uh just uh be stronger when uh, the previous champion dies. Like, it's like when Kaldalas dies, he'll, the the Kaldalas personality will transfer to the next suit, and that next suit will Kaldalas will be stronger for a time. The uh, the Taldarin Mojo upgrade cash pretty good. Rapid recharge. This will make your suits recharge faster. Also pretty good. The uh, Warburn Kaldarin upgrade cash. Yeah, this is really good. This will, yeah, that Warbringer will uh, allow you to uh, get that single target damage, which is pretty, pretty massive. And Tactical Data Web will allow you to get the uh, the big buff. This will un unlock Network Administrator. If if you're prestiging, if you want to level Aquandelar, once you hit level, I think, 4, you'll be able to farm Lock and Load. Because with the, Ar with the Arbiter suit, you can just uh, drop down onto one of the locks. I have, a, I have a video on this, how to level using Phoenix. So lock and load, use Arbiter suit to go to loss, un unleash your champions, or rather your Phoenix suits using Aquandalar. It'll do really good damage with the Predator suit and the Dragoon suit. Uh, if you're gonna level Network Administrator, do not use Network Administrator itself. Because the, the, the Tactical Data Web is only available at level 15. Prior to that, you only had the disadvantage. That is, your uh, non-hero combat units are are worse, just straight up worse. They are cheaper though, so yeah. Uh, I still recommend. I still do not recommend network administrator prior to level fifteen. You only use that once you have level fifteen. But when you once you have level fifteen, that is the way to go. Unconquered spirit, yeah, don't really use this as much. But again, it it is about avenging protocol, which only unlocks level eleven. If you like Unconquered Spirit, do not use it prior to level 11, unless you like Suffering. But yeah, once you have level 3 or 2, you can really start spamming Akundelar, Unlock and Load. Uh, again, look for the video, uh, Akundelar, Lock and Load, and uh, just kind of fly around the map, be there in like 11 minutes with a good ally. There we go. Um, this time though, it's level 1, so I'll be using Purifier Executor without any prestigious or masteries. So we'll be going on Minor Evacuation. So Brian, let's hear about the map. Minor Evac is the map where we have to fight our way to the Evac ships. 
and defend them from the infested as they launch. We have to successfully defend five ships to win. Yeah, five ships. On brutal difficulty, we lose the game if we lose more than one ship. All right. So, by the way, uh, I almost forgot. If you are not, if you're not playing on brutal difficulty, while leveling, your power spike at level four, with Kaldalis, uh, with Kaldalis air damage, should allow. If you play on normal difficulty while leveling, you can you can ramp it up to hard, at level four. If you're playing on hard difficulty, you can ramp it up to brutal on level four. But if you're playing normal difficulty while leveling, you can actually ramp it up to brutal at level ten, I think. Yeah, level ten should be fine. Anyway, let's go ahead and then start. Thank you to Legendary Center and Trent Tent who are supporting me in the mobilization rate here, and Dart and Shadow Archon who are supporting me in the pulse cannon here. Thank you to all my supporters on Patreon. Once again, I am on the Maguro map it's because I'm level one, so I kind of have to. And at level 1 solo, so I kind of have to make it, you know, favorable for myself somehow, so I picked Protoss. So, the lesson for this map is that on minor evacuation, anti-air is scarce. So if you're playing on this map, and you have trouble surviving, aka if you're level 1, leverage your air units, just on this map, by the way. So if you're playing on a different map, you're gonna have a harder time, because you will have to deal with anti-air with this strategy in particular but on this map i'm gonna show you how if you're on this map there is not that much anti-air so you can actually leverage them so you can see i'm just teching up again the uh this the uh tech tree skipping uh upgrade unlocks at level 10 so i'm gonna have to tech up normally here see just starting with the gateway i'm just using that Rainer lesson of just spending your stuff on whatever you can find stuff to spend on. So right now it's just with the first gas, powering up more workers. So I'm gonna start a pylon. You do not want to be play block. So uh, I've learned by listening to 1D1 uh, games that once you start your pylon, once you hear the, uh, once you hear the, you, you must construct these little pylons. Before you start the actual pylon, you've really messed up because you need to make like three pylons to offset that. Although I'm not sure if that applies to co-op. What I do know is that it's just better to not be supply blocked. Making a forge because I will actually need a couple of cannons for detection and anti-air. Although the scouts are pretty good anti-air on their own, but detection will be the primary purpose of cannons because the banshees are cloaked and we actually need to deal with them. Putting three workers in the gas. So as uh, I mentioned, I will go straight to Stargate to save the money for it. And there it, is. there it is. So Stargate is on the way. And the probe is on the way to the expansion. So um, for those who don't know, actually for those who don't know, I like to take this path around the uh, the defenses on the first ship because this area, this area over here, this area is actually full of defenders. So what I like to do instead is uh, screw around these de defenses so I can set up properly over here and uh, get a better chokehold on this first ship area. Speaking of first ship area, if you play on normal or normal difficulty or hard difficulty, I believe the first ship will spawn here so that's easier to defend. But since we are in Brutal, we will start here for our first one. So, Phoenix is out, I just use him right away. Make some cannons over here, top defend. Since I do have those metals. I just use stand Phoenix there. Actually, yeah, I use, use this to take out those dudes. It's gonna be pretty good to take them out while I have the advantage. Well, nothing, nothing much is happening just yet. Just so I don't have to contend with them later on. Build another cannon. I'm currently losing on my first scout. You can see scout is on the way. And as you may have seen before, I generally like to get only attack upgrades instead of attack and armor. Because in co-op, it's usually more valuable to destroy your enemy before they destroy you than it is to trade. Because if you're trading with Amon, unless you're Zagar or Stukov or maybe Stethboy, you're losing. 
scout is here. That will add some much needed firepower. You can see I'm still in one base. Sometimes if I get an unfavorable ship on this map, I just kind of skip that first ship in favor of getting myself a fast expansion. This is, I think, Dark Templar composition. I remember setting it to that. Just so just in case you think that I've been very fortunate to get a weak composition, do not worry, I'm not actually that lucky. I intentionally set the composition to be that easy one. Because again, this is level 1 and soloing, so you can't really, uh, can't really understate how difficult it is, how truly difficult it is to solo with a level 1 commander. Canis are holding strong. Third scout has reached the ship. Use the Praetor suit to destroy this wave. You can see that I haven't attacked with my scouts because this turret is actually pretty good anti air. So I'm shredding this turret first using the uh, Praetor suit before I fly my scouts in so that they have a distinct advantage of not getting shot. Whack these guys. Take out most of them. Pretty nice. Scouts are doing work, cleaning out this area. Meanwhile, Phoenix is cleaning out this section, this section of the map. Good. Expansion has finally started. There's something shooting at it, but I quickly uh, focus them down. Okay, this I think I might lose this scout, which is unfortunate. I wasn't paying attention. I was kind of looking at these fight, th this fight instead of this one. You can see I've started plus two, by the way. No, no, that's plus one. I apologize. That is plus one. It's actually like 60% done, which is good. Which means my scouts will be able to focus down the enemies, the enemy infested, with much more ease than they otherwise would. As I have mentioned before, Attack upgrades are usually better in co-op because you do not want to trade with Amon. And if you're getting armor upgrades, you expect to trade, generally speaking at least. If you're a P2 Tychus, of course you don't trade. You just tank. The scouts will intercept this force pretty easily. Don't forget about that enemy attack. And It'll none of them managed to unload anything, which is exactly what we were hoping for. So now I'm starting to saturate the expansion. While still getting all these scouts started the fleet bacon even. So I can get the sight vision and range upgrade for the scouts. Shoot that tank down just to give my scouts the advantage. I'll fire once more. No, not even. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think I did that move specifically so that this, the uh, the Dragoon suit can conserve energy. This is good. Conserving energy is pretty awesome. Return that cargo. They can save just saturating my base, my expansion even more. Now I have 11 scouts, and you will see the power of air units on a map where there's no anti-air. Well, soon at least. Because I will probably activate that ship soonish. Start a robo there. I think I started a robo for mobile detection. For these specifically, these banshees. Down it goes. Okay, two more scouts on the way. And I think I need some head block once again. Which is unfortunate, but like... Sometimes it just happens. Oh look, it, is, it was level 2. Yeah, it was plus 2. Yeah, this is already plus 3. Nice. So actually, I was already researching plus 2 earlier. Which is awesome. Anyway. I think I've just about... Yeah, I'm just about ready to start that ship. Starting two cadence here for detection. Not sure if you want to deal with Gladbringer, but Start another pylon. Add another. It won't be long before the noise draws the 
So uh, regarding the regarding the panic launches, if you don't stand a unit on the ship, on this uh, on this beacon that will start the ship, they'll start to panic launch. But the panic launch will actually initiate a one minute cooldown. Uh, and when that minute passes, the ship will will start launching, which is another two minutes. So the the panic launch is basically a three minute timer. Where the first minute you you need to reinforce the ship, and the second timer of two minutes you have to defend the ship during the actual launch. But what I did here, as you notice, is that just before the panic launch started, I stood Phoenix here. Just before the panic launch started, there, I actually stood Phoenix on this beacon just before the panic launch started, and that is a valid way to start the ship without using the panic launch and these users are stunned I actually have 19 scouts or rather 20 scouts now so that's pretty good these canisters have done their job they have helped me eliminate this wave without taking damage to my actual forces start a few more pylons and the ship is launched you can see my my scouts are barely damaged like only two of them are actually those no, are but only three of them are actually damaged and the rest are in tip top shape to clear the rest of the map i'm just starting more pylons so i will not worry that much about being supply blocked i actually start plus one armor right now just because i've uh, already finished my attack upgrades they should shred this base with much more ease a little bit of hull damage on that one scout, but otherwise fine. Those eradicators are out of control. They could be Still producing scouts two at a time. Try to break them down. That's good. Looks like Blackbringer's gone. They can have this damn planet. Starting more workers. They're heading for the ship again. You know what to do. And actually, too many there. There we go. I have been accused many times of oversaturating my gases, but on most of those times. It is because I actually intentionally put more workers than necessary because of it because of that gas being far. So to fully saturate that you need four workers. I have also been accused in the past of undersaturating my gases, like only two workers out of three. And my best explanation for that is I just wanted to make the video more exciting by handicapping myself, not giving my full strength versus Amon, just to show you guys that you don't need to be perfect to beat these mutations. These piles will put me to 150 supply. I should actually start more. Yeah, I have, I have actually started more scouts. Adding more cannons over here. Scouts still going to work. Still whacking these guys. So you can see that there's actually no ship here. I was kind of pre clearing to make my life easier later on. So now that I've confirmed that there's no ship here, the next attack wave, whenever it spawns, or the next uh, ship attack wave when it spawns, will spawn in this area and attack this ship. So remember that guys, if you are the, if this is your third ship, and there are no, if this is your third ship, you need to check the ship right away. Because if this is, if this is where the ship is, there the enemy will send an attack wave to destroy the ship. If it's not this ship, it will be this other ship instead. So if you're fighting, if you're defending this ship, you have to pre-clear this area. And once you're defending this ship, you have to pre-clear this area to give yourself an easier time of defending the next attack wave whenever it spawns. And I think I will soon re-rally my scouts to have a better to have a better intercept point. And actually, you can see my stargates are already rallied all the way to this spot over here. These scouts are. I'll just bank up these scouts here. You can see this. These two targets are also rallied to that same spot. I'm banking these scouts here because I've confirmed that there's no ship here, and therefore the next attack wave will come to this ship. I want to be in position to intercept whenever the next and wherever the next wave is. Start a twilight so I can get more shield upgrades, and then I will need more pylons actually. One pylon, a singular pylon, amazing. 
And but you can see though, my scouts are barely taking any damage. They are just raiding supreme over the skies. And it's not actually a concern at all. So my, my scouts don't have to worry about dying. I can just actually back them up until I max out. The worry is having the firepower to burst down the enemies before they bust through my 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 wall and destroy that ship. As you can see, with this many scouts, and by the way, since I rushed out the attack upgrades, I am doing pretty okay with my uh, with my damage output. More scouts on the way. I think I've not noticed at all that I'm supply blocked for the past three minutes or so. It's kind of a big issue. It was actually no excuse for resupply block that for that long. Because I was floating money. So, so was, that was definitely a mistake. But as I demonstrated during the Alarak video, mistakes happen. And all you can do is recover and try to do better. And as you can see, I I prepared as with the Vorzun, the lesson for the Vorzun video, preparation pays off. I stuck a, a lot of scouts here, so they were able to intercept the attack and give us a big runway to kind of re uh, refill my supply. Vacu start another Stargate, add more pylons, because I'm actually close to maxing out, which is nice. So my Dragoose is actually fully energized now, it has full energy, so I'm actually, I've actually used it so I can recharge the Predator suit. And I've actually started to launch the next ship. I believe this is ship number four. Which is good. As I approach Max. Shoot him down. You can see this guy has 19 kills. Two kills. 19, so 20. Wow. Two scouts each have 20 kills. That's incredible. This was 21 kills. 22. 53. This got us 53 kills. That's insane. 37, 32. My scouts are actually amazing. 50 kills. My goodness. I actually didn't realize how well my scouts have been performing. Because I was focused on getting more and more of these scouts. I didn't realize they've been destroying the enemies. At a rapid pace. 53 kills now. Well, I am losing a few scouts. For the most part, they have been just living long enough to shoot down all the enemies before they reach the ship. 54 kills now, by the way, on that one scout. And as you can see, anytime I lose scouts, I just replace them. I use the Predator suit, kind of alleviate some pressure from my air forces. 55 kills now by the way. I start plus 3 shields. I use the Dragoon suit to clear that off. And there it is. That scout now is 58 kills by the way. I just have this, uh, this scout on, uh, on watch. 53, 41, 36, 23, 41, 20, 16. That's insane. Oh, I hope I don't lose that 53 kill one. That is the actual hero. If anyone is up for promotion, 59 now. If anyone's up for, for promotion to Mojo, it'd be, it'd be that scout. But I just hope that well, I don't actually lose that scout. It is regening health. It has almost full upgrades. It has plus 3 attack, plus 3 armor, and plus 2 shields. So the third shield armor is on the way. And it is at 59. Amazing kills. Actually, I normally start the ship. Am I, am I going to the bailing ship? I might, actually. Normally, I start the ship because it has siege tanks instead of bailings. I generally just like bailings because I generally, I usually have ground forces. But I think I might have realized that since the enemies, or since my force are actually air based, having bailings isn't that big of a threat. So I think I've decided to start this ship instead of uh, instead of this one. I normally I normally prefer starting this one, but 
since I have air forces, it doesn't matter as much. So I can, yeah, f fight beings with air units, it wouldn't matter that much. The scout with 59 kills is still very much, it is, at the, it is very much at the front though. There's a risk it might get shot down. It's, it's 60 kills now. Got an enemy attack coming for our base. It's now at 60 kills. Okay, I think that was Observer. Yeah, it was that Observer. I'm making more pilots over here. I think I'm being debated by like a single observer. A ship is gonna make a run for yeah, I think I'm being debated by a single observer. So now I kind of have to scramble back to this spot to defend. I do have Phoenix though. Yeah, Phoenix is just standing here coyly. But he knows that when, when his number gets called, he will have to use the Dragoon suit. To wipe these out. <laughs> Like it ain't no thing. Like it actually ain't no thing. So you can see I'm just uh, building a bunch of cannons here. Trying to uh, block all those enemies from hitting my stuff. And the ship, most of all. You can see this 60, this, this 60 kill scout now has full set of, a full set of upgrades. And is absolutely ready to intercept the infested. Uh, I mentioned this earlier in the video, but I, it, it's worth mentioning again. If you're on minor evac, scouts are good because the enemy doesn't have a lot of anti-air. But normally, I prefer going Kaldalas with Warbringer for Splash. Now, I'm only going mass scouts this game because the enemy doesn't have anti-air. The lesson for this game is if you're on this map, the enemy doesn't have great anti-air. So you're... Scouts will actually reign supreme. Scouts and carriers, but you need damage help versus invested, so I chose to go with scouts instead. Okay, they're actually moving up here. Okay, I've actually run out of energy a little bit. Or it's at least it's on cooldown. Got two shots there. I think I smashed this disruptor. But yeah, it's not necessary because this is the last ship. You can see. I'm at 4 out of 5, and I just need to, I actually just need to get this last, sh last ship off. And we'll be able to end the mission with that scout at 70 kills, by the way. This hero's got a 70 kills. Where is that? It's over here. Not close to dying at all. Although, there's a risk that these guys would eventually scratch this ship, but they just barely fungled it. They just barely fungled it, but otherwise it is perfectly protected with scouts. So, yeah. On minor evac, Phoenix can use mass scouts and not have to worry about dying at all. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. If you have an idea for it also, please leave that in the comment. As you can see the score screen, most of the damage was indeed dealt by my scouts. 81%, that's amazing. Phoenix himself had 12.1% of the kills, and those 12.1% are the attack waves that headed head to our base. Photon cannons had 7.1. Pretty good, pretty decent. Um, yeah. Next week, Hot in the Horn, I think? I think Hot in the Horn next week. Unless I'm mistaken. I'll see you guys next time.